Hello everybody, it's just I am Jaden here for another coming of a YouTube video. Yesterday I recorded my artist review of Ozzy Osbourne and I'm going to see how that turns out in the next week or so and see how many views I can get on that and see how many people are enjoying the artist review and I'll see if I'm going to do that again. I'll probably at least do one more of those either on Bon Scott or on Dave Mustaine and I'm looking for people to decide for me who I should do my review on so if you want to leave in the comments or message me um, who I should do it on whether it's ACDC's first singer Bon Scott or Dave Mustaine of Megadeth and Metallica so help me out with that please and now this video is actually going to be a video that I'm going to be doing on the top five most influential bands in the history of music which is basically based back from the 60s all the way up until now bands that are still around and bands that are retired and bands that are influential onto other bands and influential onto music for what they did with music and I have a list made up and I'm going to go through the list and I'm going to describe my choices and I'm going to do the top five so I'm going to go five to one now I'm going to start off with number five with the pioneering heavy metal band in the history of music releasing their first album in 1970, Black Sabbath. Black Sabbath fronted by Ozzy Osbourne with guitarist Tony Iommi, bassist Geezer Butler, and drummer Bill Ward. This band was a band to be messed was not a band to be messed with. This band came out with pure power, pure dark vocals, pure satanic force where Ozzy Osbourne is actually considered not satanic as is Tony Iommi, Deezer Butler, Bill Ward but they came out with some of the most impelling lyrics filled with some of the darkest guitar riffs that have ever been known to man in the history of music and I have to say that Black Sabbath has been influ influential for the fact that even if in an interview this year Ozzy Osbourne said he can't put a tie between Black Sabbath and metal I do find that Black Sabbath is metal, as do a lot of people, as a lot of people consider Black Sabbath to be the first metal band to ever make it in music. They were the first band to do this. Coming from Black Sabbath, the new wave of British heavy metal came out with Judas Priest and Iron Maiden. Uh, heavy metal also continued with bands like Diamond Head, and which is also a new wave. And it moved on to the 1980s with bands like Exodus, Testament, Megadeth, Metallica, Anthrax, Slayer and so many other bands, Rob Zombie and I just think that Black Sabbath remains in this list because they're a band that's talented all around you got Bill Ward on drums and back in the 70s and 80s Bill Ward can shred on the drums, he can make he could play triplets, he could play all those sick fills, he could do drum solos and he did it all in a single bass kit and everyone remembers him for what he did in songs like The Wizard Pan, um, The Wizard War Pigs um, his work in Black Sabbath, his work to softly hit the ride in the singles that we hear Brad Wilk try and imitate on 13 in songs like God is Dead and End of the Beginning and overall the bass work was heavy, the bass work in my opinion, this is the second best metal bass work in or I'm sorry this is the first best metal bass work in the history of metal in my opinion and then following that list would be Cliff Burton with Metallica and then probably Steve Harris with the Iron Maiden and then David Olsen with Megadeth and I'd have to give that to Geezer Butler as the number one spot for top metal bassist he was incredible, no he might not have been as talented and as fast as Cliff Burton but he had evil bass riffs, he was a good bassist he could fill anything, he didn't show off, it's just what he did what he did and Geezer Butler in my opinion was incredible and then you top it all off with Ozzy Osbourne and Ozzy Osbourne was an incredible vocalist, I did my review on him yesterday he only spent the first eight years of his career with Black Sabbath recording I think five albums or something like that his final album in 1978 was Never Say Die he went off and did a solo project as Black Sabbath went on without him with Ronnie James Deal and they renamed the band to Heaven and Hell which now it is Black Sabbath again as Ozzy Osbourne releases 13 in this year of 2013 but I have to say that Black Sabbath is on this list and I don't think there's any reason why an influential band list should not include the first heavy metal band of all time which, span, which spun and spawn a big list of heavy metal. Now there's certain metal genres that sprung more that sprung more types of genres like thrash metal, spun speed metal and um, uh, metalcore 
and whatnot. But heavy metal was the basis of it all. And without guys like Jimmy Page, Tony Iommi, Ozzy Osbourne, Geezer Butler, and then Bill Ward, I don't know if bands like Iron Maiden and Judas Priest would have found their way as easily without listening to that stuff and thinking, if there's a band that has the guts to come out and do this, we have the guts to come out and do this. And but only we're gonna up the tempo. And that's exactly why I feel Black Sabbath deserves to be number five on this list. Next on my list, now it was kind of iffy for me where to place two, two, three, and four. But on this part of the list, I have to probably say Rush. Rush is my all-time favorite band. They're uh, they're the holy trinity of progressive rock. Rush is number four on this list solely based on the fact that they took the caves of prog rock that were dug out by Pink Floyd in my opinion. They took those caves and they painted those caves and they constructed things with those caves with the music. Bonnie all the way back in 1974 with uh, John Rutsey on drums, Alex Legson on guitars, and Geddy Lee on vocals and bass guitar and keyboards. And self-titled Rush, which featured songs like Working Man, um, and there's a couple other songs that I can't really think of. Um, um, oh, Finding My Way was another song off that album. And then John Rossi was weaned and diagnosed with diabetes. And he was not healthy enough to go on tour with the band. So they found Neil Peart late in 1974 as the new guy, as they refer to him sometimes. Neil Peart, one of the top five drummers of all time and basically everyone on the list. But in my opinion, he's the best current drummer out there for his style, his ability, his speed, and his technique and his creativity and the ability that he can write 90% of the songs for a band as a drummer. Um, this band was legendary. There's bands that follow them like Coheed and Cambria, Muse, um, Triumph. Band, Triumph doesn't really follow them. They came out around the same time, but their band just kind of like them. And I think Rush is a band that comes to it. They're like Black Sabbath. Every member of the band was talented. You've got Neil Bird on drum. It's pretty bad when in the guitar solo for a band. Most people, most Rush fans are sitting there listening to Geddy Lee's bass riffs and Bill Ward's drum, and I'm sorry, Neil Peart's drum and Neil Peart's drum fills and Neil Peart's drum ability while they're listening to Alex Lation shred. And no, Alex Lation isn't the best guitarist in the world. He's he's not a top ten, but in my opinion, Alex Lation, Alex Lation is a top fifty guitarist of all time, and. He kind of has a long debate with David Gilmour for his ability to play solos like Will Be a Strong Jado or Closer to the Heart or um, Spirit of the Radio or Tom Sawyer and just solos like that that have so much feeling in them and, and like Lime White and Free Will and Red Barchetta. It, it kind of goes together with uh, David Gilmour's ability on songs like Time and Comfortably Numb and um, In the Flesh and um, Hey You. And I just have to say that Rush deserves a spot on this list at number four ahead of Black Sabbath because they came out all the way back in 1974, four years after Black Sabbath. But Rush did something that no bands did. They came out, they wrote their own music, they did their own thing. And when 2112 came out after Karis' Car Field came out, the studio said, you gotta do this, you gotta do that because we can't keep these fine like this. And they said, nope, we're doing it our own way and we're going to do things right and if we go out at least we went out doing something that we wanted to do and they put out 2112 and 2112 reigns to be one of the top prog rock albums of all time and it's known to be one of the biggest rock albums of all time probably in the top 20 top 30. Um, Rush comes out they do their own thing they're all musically talented they write amazing songs they've been around for 38 going on 39 years they have 20 studio albums and I think that they'll have one more studio album in the time I don't think their legacy is as great as Pink Floyd, but I do think them being the second big prog rock band of all time, and them coming out of a Canadian area of Toronto, Ontario, coming out, and their first gig was in Cleveland when that's when Working Men was first played, and that's where they first played their concerts, and that's when they finally got a chance to be big with bands like Kiss and whatnot. I feel that they are influential, I feel they're musically influential, and I feel they've done a lot for music. And it's really helped a lot of people come out and do their own thing in music and follow Rush's path. And the 2010 release of Beyond the Lighted Stage was an excellent movie to watch for musicians and fans alike. On number three on this list, I would probably put ACDC. ACDC started their career with Bon Scott with albums like Let There Be Rock and Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap and Highway to Hell. And Paul Rudd on, Paul Rudd on drums 
and Angus Young on shredding guitar with his patented SG, not patented, but it seems like it is with him. Everyone puts ACDC, if they don't know Angus Young, to the face of the Gibson SG. And then you put Bon Scott on vocals. Bon Scott did his own thing. And bon Scott's a lot like Geddy Lee when he comes out. And he sings in a way that there's people that can say, ah, his voice is annoying, his voice isn't good. But you hear that so much more with Geddy Lee than you would with than you would with uh, Bon Scott. Because Bon Scott, you know, he had this screeching Austrian voice. And no one really had a problem with it. Aust Australian, I'm sorry. I'm not a huge ACDC fan. But they come out and... They've made their own music for so long, and you know, Back in Black comes out, and it's currently the second highest rock album of all time, courtesy of my friend Jeff. If he ever watches this video, I have to give him credit for telling me that last night, because when I looked it up, they were currently fourth under Dark Side and the Eagles where he's hit. But, uh, they come out, Angus Young, you know all of his guitarists, you know Back in Black, you, um, you know for whom the bell is all uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> um, Hell's Bell, sorry, and you just, you, you know everything that they've written for those about to rock, and Let There Be Rock, a whole lot of Rosie, um, you know all those guitarists, you know them all so well, and then you come up to the point where in 2008 they released Black Ice, and now I think that, I'm not a huge fan of ACDC, and I think ever since after Back in Black, with um, some of their albums like High Voltage and whatnot, I believe that they've kind of released some albums that they've kind of, they've kind of started to pave the way for bands like Nickelback where their fans don't give up on them once they build their fan base with their first couple albums and with Brian Johnson and Focals it seems like they've more or less kind of found a way to keep going in the same path and keep playing the same music but to me it sounds too similar to me it's too much of the same and it, it I don't want to buy into their albums and music as much because of that but and nonetheless I can't avoid ACDC from being on the list of the top five most influential list because and I did have a band like The Who on this list originally, and that's an honorable mention. Who was a big band? Keith Moon, Pete Townsend, Roger Daltrey. But The Who didn't... I, I, I don't hear enough of music that's like The Who, like I do with ACDC, with bands like Airborne, and just... You just hear it everywhere. They're a band from the 70s that comes out, and even with Metallica and Megadeth, there's 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 so much influence. Like, you listen to interviews with Dave Mustaine and James Hetfield, and they say their main influences are Judas Priest, Iron Maiden, ACDC, Black Sabbath, and whatnot. You just... And you can't get away from that. And, like, songs like Problem Child and whatnot, it's just... Bon Scott was such a legendary on vocals, and then Brian Johnson comes in, his voice is 98% the same, and they produce such great music like Back in Black, and For Those About to Rock, and High Voltage, and Ball Breaker, and whatnot, and Who Made Who. And I just got to say, ACDC deserves a number three spot on this list. But I think they've done more for music than Black Sabbath, or Rush has popularity-wise and commercially successful wise They've gotten their music and influence them to more people. And it's, it's music you can go back to listen to when you're driving in the car, when you're sitting in your house or anything. So it's just good. It's, it's a good influence and it's good for this list. Number two on this list, I have to give it to a previously mentioned band when talking about Rush. David Gilmore, Nick Mason, um, Richard Wright, and Roger Waters. Roger Waters, one of my favorite songwriters. And what band other than Pink Floyd deserves a number two spot on this song? on number two spot on this list, sorry, of top five most influential bands. They come out as a band that did their own thing starting in 1965 as The Pink Floyd, which The The was dropped back in 1969. Pink Floyd comes out and they do their own thing. And there's not a lot of albums from the 60s that are really known, but what was really known was Wish You Were Here and Dark Side of the Moon and The Wall and Animals and Echoes. And to me, it was just really, Pink Floyd is just everything you need in music. The Wall, Dark Side of the Moon are two of the top 20 highest selling albums of all time. Dark Side of the Moon is currently ranked second tied with ACDC's Back in Black. And The Wall is currently somewhere in the mid 30 million rank. And everyone can still listen to that stuff. And if people don't own that album yet, that's not an album that you steal off the internet. No, that's something that you hear people say, yeah, I just went out and bought The Wall, or I just went out and bought the remastered version of Dark Side or Animals. The Pink Floyd just did something with music that no one had ever done. They had that psychedelic, scientific kind of style of music, 
that they took and experimented with, and they did things with music that no one ever done. They they took their own kids. They took the sounds of birds. They took the sounds of household utensils. They took the sounds of cars, and they recorded it in studio and they put it inside the music. And in my opinion, the Wall is my favorite album of all time, and comfortably known as my favorite song of all time. David Gilmour is himself a bigger influence than bands like Black Sabbath are as a whole. David Gilmour is an influence to guitarists all around for his ability to not do eight finger tapping, to not do sweeping solos, but his ability on songs like Hey You and Comfortably Numb in Time, his ability to write the riffs where people say, oh that's a cool riff, and then he goes into the solo, like it makes you want to close your eyes and lift your head and just, just think about the solo and just, and just think. David Gilmore is a legend on guitar. He he's done things on guitar that people could recreate, but you're never gonna recreate the feeling that comes from songs like Hey You with Roger Waters on bass, the the, the pounding drums of Nick Mason and um Richard Wright on keyboards and then you just go right back into the vocals of David Gilmore and Roger Waters and over they were just incredible and I mean the Wall, Dark Side of the Moon, those two albums alone, if those are the only two albums that this band ever released in their category, I would still have to say Pink Floyd is still one of the most influential bands of all time for releasing those two albums and then calling it quits. And then Pink Floyd comes back with The Division Bell in the 90s and then they reunite in 2005 and for the Live Aid show. And there's not anything that this band has ever done wrong, and there's not anything live that this band has ever done wrong. You look at Roger Waters, he's 70 years old, and he's going out and touring the wall live right now. And there's so many people out there that, is, that probably don't know of him, that don't even have a clue that this guy's 70 years old, and he's going and singing and playing bass with all these other musicians, and he brought Nick Mason along, and he brought David Gilmer along for a couple of shows, and some other artists, and Brian Adams was on a show. This guy is going out performing an album from 19... From 1981, I'm pretty sure. No, 1979, actually, I'm pretty sure. And he is performing that album live, and he still sounds incredible. And at the Live Eight show, they sound incredible. All the stuff, they just sounded perfect. And now Roger and David Gilmore is the main reason that Pink Floyd will never be together again. They argue, whatever, but they get along now a little better. Kind of like Magnus and Metallica, but. It's it's sad that this band is never going to get a chance again because Pink Floyd is a band that needs to reunite. Black Sabbath reunited, and they're still working together and they're touring and they're supposed to make another album. The Led Zeppelin is supposed to have a 2014 return with John Paul Jones, Jimmy Page, and Robert Plant, and Rick May Bonds or rest in peace. But I mean, this is just a band that needs that chance to have another go at things because they could come up with another album. They're like Black Sabbath. They're like Led Zeppelin. If people say they're going to make a new album, the hype's going to be huge, it's going to be the most anticipated thing, and then people are going to come out and buy this album and find out that this Pink Floyd is Pink Floyd, Black Sabbath, Black Sabbath. They come out with 13, they came out made an album that sounded just like classic Black Sabbath, and people are going to think, oh, this, oh, this, is, from a, this is an old Sabbath song, this must be, no, this is new Sabbath making new songs that are as good and as legendary as back then. Just like what Alice in Chains could have done if Lane Staley was still alive with a double but kind of here. Great album, but it would have been even better if they could have had Lane Staley on vocal still and may he rest in peace also. So Pink Floyd is number two on this list. And finally, number one, in my opinion, the most influential band in the history of music. That band has been none other than starting in nineteen sixty somewhere around somewhere around sixty eight. Led Zeppelin. Led Zeppelin had a 20 year run time around there and in my opinion the most legendary band in the history of music. You have John you have John Bonds of Bonham on drums. He's an incredible drummer. He was better than Keith Moon. He competed with Neil Peart back in the 70s. You have John Paul Jones on bass, one of the top five basses in all time, along with basses like Getty Lee, Cliff Burton, The Who's basses, and Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. You have Jimmy Page on guitar. Was Jimmy Page the best guitarist of all time? No, he probably wasn't. But Jimmy Page's tone, Jimmy Page's balls with the guitar, and Jimmy Page's ability with the guitar in songs like Heartbreaker and Whole Lot of Love and Communication Breakdown, just his riffs, his ability to beat and confuse you, even though there's conspiracy that that song was stolen from another band that was too small to make any profit off of that song. Led Zeppelin came out and they did something that no one ever did with music and they changed music forever. Jimmy Page's guitar riffs and Jimmy Page's guitar ability is supposed to be 
what set off heavy metal with Black Sabbath. But now, I heard from another person, um, Jason Cartier, I know him, and he said that uh, Led Zeppelin hates being compared to Black Sabbath because they, they think they're better than Black Sabbath. And you know what? I think Black Sabbath is the reincarnation of Led Zeppelin, but I think Led Zeppelin is the greatest band of all time. You have Robert Plant to Ozzy Osbourne. You've got songs like Hole in the Sky by Black Sabbath. That sounds like Robert Plant from vocals. You got Tony Iommi, who's not as skilled as guitarist as Jimmy Page, but you got stuff off the new album like um, Damaged Soul and End of the Beginning, where you kind of compare it and you say, "Wow, that is that is a Jimmy Page type of stuff." Well, or you go back in the catalogs, the songs like War Pigs and whatnot, and you think this is a legendary song like Stairway, like Heartbreaker, and like uh, Babe, I'm gonna leave you. And it's just you got Robert Plant on vocals. You got one of the top. You got. In most people's list, the top three singer, the top three guitarist, um, a top three bassist, and the top three drummer, all in one band. It's it's basically they can all play their instruments extremely well. Robert Plant's an incredible singer. And then you go to Black Sabbath, incredible singer, and they're all good with their instruments. Now neither Jimmy Page or Tony Iommi were incredible guitarists that people look at and say they're amazing. They're better than guys like Dave Mustaine, James Hetfield, Kirk Hammett. Uh, Steve Vai, Paul Gilbert, they're not better than those guys, but their ability with the guitar is better than those guys. Guys like Jimmy Page, David Gilmour, Alex Lyson, they surrender their skill and speed that they could have if they would have taken the time to learn it for their ability to make incredible sounding riffs and incredible sounding solos, and that's just perfect to listen to. That's that's per And nobody, I don't think there's any guitarist I can say that there's not anything influenced or made by Jimmy Page that they haven't learned. I mean, you go back in time to bands like The Who with Pete Townsend and you just go back and you keep going back and you keep going back. And you have to go back all the way to Elvis Presley and to find a guy that's a guitarist that played guitar that was an influence on music as much. Jimmy Page influenced heavy metal. He influenced classic rock. He influenced classic rock. There's so many guitarists all the way going through thrash metal, the metalcore, that can say that they look back to Jimmy Page for an example of how, uh, for an example of influence on their guitar, Jimmy Page alone is that he's a bigger influence than David Gilmour. He's a bigger influence than Rush. He's a bigger influence than ACDC. He's he. I can guarantee a Angus Young got influence from, from Jimmy Page. They're they're just a Brit, they're just a British band that came over and they became big worldwide. And there's no one or there's no country around the world that doesn't have a a big spawn of Led Zeppelin fans. I mean. Everyone loves Led Zeppelin. Not everyone, but I mean every country in the world, no matter what race you are, there's there's always going to be people that love Led Zeppelin, and Led Zeppelin is going to remain through the ages as the song that remains the same. Everyone in any time is going to have a Led Zeppelin song that plays on the radio that everyone can hear at any time if they're a rock fan. Rock is never going to evolutionize to the point where Led Zeppelin and Rush and Pink Floyd and Black Sabbath aren't being played in the mix. No one's ever going to forget Iron Man. No one's ever going to forget War Pigs. No one's ever going to forget Closer to the Harvest Spirit of the Radio or Tom Sawyer. Tom Sawyer being the front runner of that. No one's ever going to forget Comfortably Number Hey You. These are all just songs that are so influential and so popular and so commercially successful and so good that no one could ever recreate them. That they're going to be around forever and everyone's always going to remember them. Going through my list, Black Sabbath, Rush, ACDC, Pink Floyd, and Led Zeppelin. This is my top five most influential list. I would love comments. I would love arguments in my comments. I would love people disagreeing, and I would love to see other people's arguments as to what they think my list is like and how they think my list could change. This is just my opinion, but I would love to hear yours. Thanks for watching.